All right, so now uh, we're taking a look at this idea of a quadratic. Um, in grade nine, you guys would have talked a lot about linear relations. A uh, linear relation was the f of the form y equals mx plus b. Now with quadratic relations, we're in a situation where if I were to look at, uh, you know, here's some, lin these are all linear relations. That and this x variable has a power. The power on this x variable, although it's not written, is a one, a one, a one. So these all have powers of one here for these x variables. Now these x variables have, with the powers of one, what they do is because of the power of one, you have relations that if I go to graph it, you know, it looks something like this or maybe something like this. Depending on the slope, sometimes it would be increasing, sometimes it would be decreasing. Now we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at relations where they're not powers of one, but they have powers of two in them. You can still have x's. Like I can still have an x plus three or I could have a five x minus five or eight. Um, it doesn't really matter. But the point being is, here is now we're looking at relations where the highest power that exists is a two, is a two, is a two. When that happens, what you have is you have what's known as a quadratic. And the word quad in Latin means to square, i.e. powers of two. So that's what's going on here. We're looking at this idea of quadratics. Okay, so let's kind of take a look here. A quadratic is a degree two polynomial. So I use this term degree. The degree of a polynomial is the highest power that exists in it. So when we were talking about linear relations earlier, which if you remember were these, this right here, the three X plus three or five X plus one or three X plus five, whatever we were talking about, those all had degree of one because the highest power in the expression was one. Now uh, quadratics have a degree of two. So these three examples here, if you take a look, all of these are quadratics. And the reason for that is the highest power is two, the highest power is two, and the highest power is two. So because of that, this is considered a quadratic. These four are not quadratics. Obviously this is linear right here. So that's, that has a power, highest power of one. That's a linear relation, it's not a quadratic. This here has a, would have a degree of zero. Um, the reason for that is, if you put an x to the power of zero, that's the same thing as writing down a five, in which case the degree is zero of this. This is not a quadratic. In fact, if you remember, this is a linear equation, a horizontal line, y equals to five, would look something like that. Uh, these here, like this one here, the power on this is not a two. The power on this, let me just rewrite it up here. The power on this is actually x to the negative two. The only way you can get that variable of x to the denominator is by writing a power of negative 2. All right, so um, this would not be a quadratic, and likewise, this is not a quadratic because it's stuck under a square root symbol. This has a degree of 1. This has a degree of 0. It's not, not a degree of 2, so it's no good. Uh, these don't even have degrees because they're not even expressed as polynomials. Okay, so that being said, um, we now know how to identify what, a, what is a quadratic algebraically. The question now becomes is, okay, what do quadratics look like? Here's an example of a quadratic. This isn't the only direction a quadratic can um, open. In this case here, you would use the term open, and, and by that they mean this quadratic would open upwards. Quadratics can also open downwards, and we'll look at some examples of quadratics that open downwards. But the point being here is there's a lot of new characteristics that exist for quadratics. First of all, as I read this graph from left to right, you'll notice this quadratic is going downwards until it hits a minimum value, and then goes right back up to the top. So quadratics hit what's called a minimum value, which a lot of times would be referred to as the vertex, or quadratics that open downwards hit what's called a maximum value. But every quadratic has exactly one vertex, and that vertex is either a max or a min, right? It's either a max value or it's a min value, depending on the direction of the quadratic. In this example here, this quadratic has a minimum value. Uh, likewise, quadratics have x-intercepts just like they did for linear relations. However, now because of the shape, you could be in a situation where your quadratic has two x-intercepts, one x-intercept, or no x-intercepts. And we'll look at all those examples. Um, just like linear relations, quadratics have a y-intercept and only one y-intercept. And now a new term here that you wouldn't have seen with linear relations is this, this idea of axis of symmetry. Quadratics have an axis, uh, axis of symmetry. 
What the axis of symmetry is, it's a vertical line that's going to cut the quadratic into two equal pieces. And what that means is, if I pick any point in the quadratic and go to the opposite end, drawing myself a horizontal line, right? Any, any point at all and you go to the opposite end, it has to be a horizontal line. If you do that, the length from that point to the axis of symmetry and from this point to the axis of symmetry are the same. And because they are the same, what you end up having is a perfectly symmetrical quadratic. So that means if this goes over three units at the origin, then this is gonna to go to the left three units at the same point. And you'll notice here, this, this starts at one, and then this goes over two units. It starts at one, goes over two units, right? This goes over, who knows, maybe five or six units. This goes to the left five or six units, all right? Because of that, your quadrats have a symmetrical shape, i.e. the right side is just a mirror image of the left-hand side. Okay, here's, I'll leave the notes here. You guys can reread them. I'll just kind of illustrate the, the, what we've been talking about here. Here's a situation of a quadratic that opens upwards, has no x-intercepts. Here's an example of a quadratic that has exactly one x-intercept. And this is an example of a quadratic with two. So you have three options now that you didn't have for linear relations. And again, like the terminology we've been talking about, quadratics can open upwards, as we saw, and you can also have quadratics that open downwards. Okay, and now this is just for further illustrating the points we were talking about, about the axis of symmetry, right? The axis of symmetry is going to break that quadratic into two equal pieces. I know this is the origin. The distance from here to here is one, so the distance from here to here must be one. Distance from here to here is two, so going to the left is also two. One last example here. Um, I've got here... a quadratic graphed. I have my axis of symmetry. Notice that cuts the quadratic into two equal pieces, and you have that symmetry on the right-hand side and left-hand side, right? If I pick any two of these points, the distance is the same. If I pick any two of these points, the distance across them is the same, right? Any points you choose, you'll notice the distance is the same, okay, and that's what the axis of symmetry is illustrating, all right? Uh, that's a quick introduction to quadratics. Um, review the characteristics uh, of a quadratic. Um, you know, quadratics can open upwards, they can open, open downwards, they still have x-intercepts, but they have, can have more than what you're used to. There's still the y-intercept. They now have an axis of symmetry, and they have a vertex. There is exactly one vertex. If it opens upwards, that vertex is a minimum point. If it opens downwards, that vertex is a maximum point. All right, thank you.